Well, welcome back again. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try to work on this yoke cover, this plastic cover over the end of the yoke. And it sits up here like this and covers it. And there was a uh, black skirt that came down. It was an insulator that covered all the wires and everything. But that is long crumbled away and when I removed this, you'll recall the big pieces just fell out. So I had to come up with something a little different. All I want to do is just get some kind of covering over the top of this thing. That's all. Keep the dirt out. Maybe it won't keep any moisture out, but it'll maybe keep some dirt out and crap. I don't know. So I decided to go ahead and just use a piece of uh, this plastic that I use for a lot of things. I use them for light diffusers. And also I, I use them to insulate the inside of IF cans, you know, after I've removed the... Uh, the guts out and if they don't have any insulator in there anyway all I did was cut it into a, a strip and I put a notch in it where the wires are going to fit through I have to get this in the right position actually relative to this I think if not it's not that big a deal but anyway this has to go down across these wires like that the wires will come out through the hole so let me and all I did was take the strip and uh, I cut it to the right width I think and then I just overlapped it and glued it with some, uh, I, bought, I don't know, somewhere I bought a tube of all-purpose cement. I don't even know where it came from. I found it in my workbench the other day. So I just, you know, rather than use super glue, I went ahead and used that all-purpose cement and just held it together with some paper clips. So let's get the paper clips off there. Yeah, she's holding pretty good. I'm kind of happy with that. That's really neat. I love this stuff. You know, what this is, you buy this stuff in, in a, a large sheet. Uh, over at Hobby Lobby, over in the quilting department. It's a, it's a plastic. It's, it's really, really has come in handy for so many things. I just cut it to the size I need. I've used it for uh, I, just all sorts of things, okay? I used them uh, to insulate coils on the Atwater Kent radio that uh, we restored you know, a couple of years ago to Atwater Kent 145, or a year ago, I guess it was. Uh, the coils sat on the chassis, and the old uh, insulators were worn out. So we just cut nice new round ones and put them down in the chassis and then set the coil right on top of it. It worked really well. Just about anything you can think of, you need an insulator. This is the thing that did it, to do it. Just take a trip to Hobby Lobby, you'll see it. And uh, now, this, now this is the thicker stuff. You don't want that real thin crap over at Hobby Lobby. It's, uh, I don't know what thickness it is, but it's, uh, if it doesn't make that sound, you got the wrong one, okay? All right, what we're going to do now, this little cover here is pretty well bent and warped from the heat over the years. It's not even straight, as you'll see. It's kind of crooked and curved. Unbelievable. You know, now some people say, well, you know, you put that in hot water. I'm not doing any of that. I am not touching this thing. I'm going to go ahead and just stick that old cover down in there like that. I'm going to cement it in once I get it to where I want it to be. And I want to make sure it will, in fact, slip over the top of, you know, all these wires and everything without causing any real damage or anything. So let's see if we can get that set up first. Well, how about that? Now I still have a little bit of adjusting to do before I finally glue it. And uh, keep in mind, this top is warped a little bit. So how about that, though? It covers it all the way around. I think that's going to do the job. I debated whether or not I should paint it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and glue it in, leave it just like that. It'll be fine. There's no sense in going crazy. I don't need flaking paint on that thing, you know, or the person that gets it from me someday. But, you know, we still have to position it properly to where I think it goes about like this. And then if I recall, this cover here was a 630 and 3 o'clock. Yeah, this thing here will go over the top at, at 630 and 3 o'clock like that. And that, that, that'll just about get it. And then we'll slip the entire yoke back down over there and we'll put that rubber ring back on. You know, again, a slow process. We took it off slowly, we'll put it back on slowly. Let's go ahead and get this thing glued together. Now, I have a mark here on this little... Uh, this I don't think these things move at all. I, they, they seem to be stuck. And they're, they're, they may be just for moving with your finger, for moving the entire deflection yoke. You know, I don't know. It seems to be insulated from everything else. And then uh, I put a mark down here on the plastic itself. And that puts everything in the proper position for when I get ready to uh, put this slot over the top of the wiring. 
And what we're going to do, I haven't done it yet, but what we're going to do is we're going to remove the plastic, put a whole bunch of glue along this black part of the um, setup, you know, all the way around. Then we're going to take the plastic, put it back down in, in the same position I have it now, using those black dots to line up. Then we're going to clamp it all together with these clamps and let it sit like that for 24 hours. And then it should be fine. It should be fine. I might even, when it's over, put a little bead of glue on the inside. But first, you know, put a little bead along the inside. I don't know, I may put a little bead all the way around, let it wait, let it uh, sit for another 24 hours. Now one thing I have to do, though, is on the white plastic from about here down to there I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper right here and I'm going to rough it up I've already roughed up the inside of the black part I'm going to rough up the clear plastic or the uh, you know the diffused looking plastic rough it up with a piece of sandpaper so I have a couple of really good surfaces and this is the glue we're going to use this is the glue I was telling you about I, don't ha I have no idea where it came from it's called quick grip all-purpose and it works pretty good but you know it's super strong and it does it works really good and like I said I'm gonna let it set for 24 hours and then we'll go ahead and see what it looks like when we're done alright the glue has been applied uh, according to the instructions on the tube of glue you apply it to one surface only I gobbed it up quite a bit there and this is the tab that has the mark on it and I shall uh, line it up with this one here and get that baby in there. It's going to take two hands. Well, that's it. We got her all done. I'm going to go ahead and let it set for 24 hours. And, you know, I would have liked to clamp, put in some clamps where I could have clamped the uh, this uh, white plastic to the black. You know, stick a clamp down inside like that and go like that. But, unfortunately, there's really a lot of bends and warps and, and everything all the way around on the black part. So I elected to just go ahead and get it as close as I can, clamp it in position, and let it, you know, set up overnight. Tomorrow, like I said, I'll probably take uh, this and put another bead around on the inside, depending on what it looks like tomorrow. Well, the old skirt's finally glued in, and it's nice and solid. It's been 24 hours. Looks pretty good, actually. I just wish that black thing hadn't been quite so so warped and messed up and everything it really is up and down <laughs> very hilly up and anyway the problem we're having now is these two rings are which are called centering rings i checked with uh, brendan on this they're supposed to be slightly magnetic but they are not so we may have to remagnetize them but that's not our big problem what we have here is they have to be able to move uh you know one moves this way the other one you know they slip across one another there's two of them there if you can look down there's two layers see, see a better picture over here there we go so what's happened is some rust has developed between them and also you know this is a two-fold issue here we have some rust that's developed between the rings and also right here along the edge uh, has tightened up over the years too now this is not supposed to be real loose you know where they're floppy but we have to be able to move them and I can't if, even, if I get the rust uh, eliminated or at least get it oiled up between the two layers, I have to be real careful. We don't want to break off this edge along here. If that, if that breaks off, there's no way to hold these rings to this black cap. We already have a, a chip out of it, if you can see right there at the far side. So this is going to be something I'll be working on in the next couple of minutes. What I'm going to do is take a little bit of a... I squirt a little bit of liquid wrench down there. This is all going to be done before I put the next... Uh, layer of glue in there but uh, I'll mark these things with a pencil one on each side real good both sides I'll give it a good mark and maybe even underneath so I, so I have a double double marking then I'm going to try to squirt some of this uh, penetrating oil down between the layers and squirt a little bit of it around here let it set and if any of that you know penetrating oil gets down here on where I'm going to be gluing I have some QD electronic cleaner, I'll just spray it out with that so we have good adherence. So wish me luck on that, we'll see what happens. In order to accomplish this, I'm having to take the tip of my knife, put it between the two layers and slightly spread them. Just enough to spray the uh, penetrating oil down in. I'm working my way all the way around it. It's going to be a little bit of a slow process, but, uh, but I, I don't think 
the problem is going to boil down, the major problem is going to be these two pieces of metal. I think the problem is going to be right here in the inside where it meets the plastic. Because, you know, like I told you, it was all warped and everything, so it's no longer round like it was. Eh, interesting dilemma here. I just have to keep working at it. I finally managed to break them loose. And now, you know, they don't turn very easily because, you know, this, this flat metal here will come around till it hits a high spot on the uh, see where it would it would slide fine right around here like this and then it would hit a high spot on that black plastic makes it a little bit rough but it does both of these uh, rings now do turn independently of one another uh, I one thing I noticed I discovered was between the two there is a gasket these are not just metal to metal sitting there there is an insulating gasket between the two and that gasket is what was jamming up. Uh, apparently there was a little bit of grease down there, uh, maybe uh, on both sides of the gasket, I don't know. And it had dried up and it was white crap that came out from between the, uh, the two pieces of metal. But anyway, that's all we're going to do with that right now. They're loose, I'm happy. Nothing was damaged. And I am going to uh, take the old QD Electronic Cleaner now. And I'm going to spray out the inside real nice and clean and get rid of all that excess uh, liquid wrench. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, put a bead of glue around there and let that harden. The bead of glue has been applied all the way around on the inside. Probably wasn't needed, just, you know, probably more overkill. But so what? Well, we have one more thing we have to do. We're going to go ahead and just use some uh, alcohol and our little acid brush. Remember that rubber ring that went around the neck of the pitch tube? It fit down and wedged itself down here, had that real thin edge on one side. This is the thick edge, this is the thin edge. It's just kind of a tapered kind of deal. Anyway, it's got a lot of crud and crap on it inside and out. We're going to go ahead and clean that baby up a little bit with that alcohol. Hopefully that'll make it fit nice and snug when it comes time to put it back together. Well, I'm real satisfied with the way that turned out. Nice and clean. I love the fact that it's still flexible. That's really cool. You know, it's amazing how everything on this, uh, everything on this TV uh, uh, deflection yoke was pretty brittle. But this thing here is nice and flexible and rubbery. I like that. All right, one more thing we don't have to mess with. One more thing. And finally, she is back where she was. I think that, that's a nice little protective cover all the way around. Protects those coils real good. All right, and I've got everything exactly in the position it was, and it's a little snugger than it was before. It would just turn real easy. And uh, this little Dumaflach, this rubber thing right here, isn't really doing that much, but I don't know. It looks to me like someone cut a piece out of it at one time with a pair of scissors. That may not... I don't think this is the original CRT to the TV. Matter of fact, I know it's not. This is a newer one, so it may have had a different... Uh, size neck on the old one I don't know and whoever did it had to modify the rubber ring but anyway we're good to go now let's go ahead and hook it up and see if it still plays after everything we did to the high voltage transformer and everything we did to the deflection yoke well we must have done something right we still have our picture of course it's a little crooked which I expected once I got the yoke back on it would not be in the exact position so let's go ahead and turn the yoke and get this picture back weight straight up and down like it's supposed to be. All I'm doing is taking it and, and moving it just like that. See, and that's bringing it around. That's pretty good right there. All right, we got a little bit more to do, but we'll get that baby uh, fixed. The vertical needs a little bit of adjustment. Let's let me mess with it. See what we can do. Looks like the horizontal could use a little too. <laughs> Well, that's a little bit better. A little bit better. I'm going to go ahead, of course, and confer with uh, uh, my mentor, Brendan, about TVs. He knows everything there is to know about these things. Been working on them since he was 16 years old. Isn't that amazing? He was Detroit's youngest TV repairman uh, at 16 years old many years ago. Anyway, we'll go ahead and keep playing with it. And uh, we'll, we'll drop the, the video here. Until next time, this is Chuck.